This is my final Trump build. It is complete with labels for each IC and LEDs that are outputting uh, the values respective to each of the chips in Trump. Uh, right now the Trump is loaded with a program uh, that contains David Feinberg's example code, which basically reads a value from RAM, adds one to it, uh, stores it back in RAM, and it repeats this whole cycle again. This output is shown on the accumulator in the red LEDs. My Trump bill consists of four basic uh, colored wires. The first is the green colored wires and those transmit a clock signal. Uh, the second is the yellow wires which transmit uh, address data telling the Trump what memory locations to access. Uh, the blue wires are the data values that uh, come from those memory locations. Uh, as well as the operands that the ALU computes. And then we've got the white wires that uh, come from the control EEPROM and some from the program EEPROM that control the different chips uh, through the machine code. Here's a basic rundown of the components of Trump. First is the clock, which outputs a clock signal and can either be switched to an automatic pulse with varying frequency or it can be switched to a manual mode by flicking the switch and pressing the push button to manually increment the clock. The clock is routed to the program counter, which increments its binary value uh, every clock pulse, and this binary value uh, goes to the program ROM uh, to access data from the program's ROM addresses where the outputs of the PC correspond to what addresses the program ROM gets its data. Uh, this data consists of the 8-bit Trumpanese uh, code, which is split into a high byte containing the opcode uh, telling the Trump what function to perform, and the low byte, which is the numerical constant value that is the uh, value attached to that function. The opcode is wired to the control EEPROM, uh, which converts uh, the trump code into 8-bit machine code. Each bit of the machine code has a direct influence on the components in the trump. The constant on the other hand goes to the multiplexer. This constant um, goes through one of the inputs uh, and the multiplexer outputs uh, its value choosing whether to output a value from the program EEPROM constant or a value read from RAM. The output of the MUX is shown with these green LEDs and they're also uh, routed to the ALU, the program counter, and the RAM addresses. Uh, the reason being is that the, the constant or the output shown in the MUX can be an operand to be computed by the ALU, a line number that the code jumps to, or an address that, uh, to select in RAM. The ALU compit, uh, computes 4-bit values of two operands with a function selected by one of the control bits, or actually multiple of the control bits. Uh, its outputs are then stored to the accumulator, which are presented on these red LEDs after one clock cycle. The outputs of the accumulator are then routed to one of the uh, operand inputs of the ALU and are also routed to the data inputs of the RAM. The RAM can either store this data from the accumulator with a write function to one of the selected addresses or it can read data from one of the selected addresses where its outputs, which are inverted, go through an inverter to restore the RAM outputs to their original state, which are then routed to the multiplexer uh, and these RAM values are shown on these green LEDs. There are seven total functions that the Trump can perform. First is a load function which loads a value present on the mul uh, multiplexer onto the accumulator and it does so by selecting the function f equals b on the ALU echoing the input from the b operand which is the output from the multiplexer. Uh, this function is selected through the highest six bits of the control EEPROM. The next two functions are the add and subtract functions. These two functions add or subtract a value on the accumulator by the uh, value on the MUX output using the ALU. The function for add and subtract 
uh, is A plus B and A minus B respectively, and they are again chosen by the six highest control bits. Here I've got a sketch or program on the program EEPROM that uh, adds two and subtracts one and constantly repeats that. Next are the store to and read functions. The store to function stores a value present on the accumulator to a specific address in RAM chosen by the multiplexer output. Here, control bit sets the RAM to uh, write mode and the accumulator outputs are frozen through another control bit as this function does not pertain to the ALU. These stored values can be read by calling the read function outputting the data value from the RAM to the multiplexer. To use this value, the it variant of a function must be called to switch from the inputs from the control, uh, the program constant uh, to the value read from RAM. Here the code is storing a number to RAM, reading it, and then loading the read value into the accumulator while also doing some subtraction. One of the seven functions is a custom function that can be chosen by defining machine code for that function in the control EEPROM. Uh, the custom function uh, for me is the shift left function. Here six control bits. Uh, select the A plus A function on the ALU where the program loaded right now. Shift seven on the accumulator to the left. The last two functions are the go to and if zero functions. These functions load a value from the mux uh, to the program counter which jumps to a specific line of code uh, located on the program EEPROM. Uh, it does this by wiring to the two highest bits of the program code through NAND gates. Uh, and then the machine code also tells the ALU to out return a logic one function, which triggers all outputs high, triggering the uh, A equals B pin. And with these two signals, the load pin on the program counter is pulled low, uh, which match the, matches the outputs of the program counter with the inputs on the MUX. Here a while loop is being performed where a go to function sets the program counter to 2 uh, and then when the accumulator is 0, the F0 function jumps the program counter to 6 where it halts. Here is the custom program written in Trumpanese I created and uploaded with the uh, EEPROM burner. Differ it's different from the program in the last video as that program was not that good. Uh, so this one right now computes the number of subtractions needed before the difference between two numbers equals zero. So here the program is loaded with numbers 15 and 7. So first one is loaded into the accumulator and then stored in address 10 of RAM. Uh, we'll call this variable n which keeps track of the number of subtractions. Next, 15 is loaded into the accumulator and then 7 is subtracted from it. The result is then stored in address 0 of RAM. Uh, since the result is not zero, the program counter increments to reading and loading and into the accumulator. Uh, now one is added to n since one subtraction has been performed and it is then saved to RAM. Uh, X is read and then loaded into the accumulator. And then the program jumps to line three uh, where the cycle repeats again. Eventually x will equal 1, and here something interesting happens when it is subtracted by 7. Uh, when this happens, the output will become 10, and that is because when an output of negative 1 is shown, uh, the ALU will loop back to 15. Uh, so if eventually uh, the goTo function will keep repeating this code, and then eventually the accumulator will reach an output of 0. I'll set this on manual mode. So here you can see that the accumulator has found an output of 0 and when it does that the if0 function triggers the uh, triggers the program counter to go to line 13 uh, which then loads the function onto which loads n onto the accumulator and then uh, halts the program on line 15 which is why it is now frozen. Here is a demonstration of it again uh, with the lower speed and uh, I'll click the orange button to reset the program.
So here you can see it has outputted, uh, it has calculated that nine subtractions are needed for 15 minus seven to become zero eventually. And this can be verified with some hand calculations. What's interesting is that uh, other combinations of numbers will never reach zero. So for example, uh, seven and two will never reach zero as the number on the accumulator will always be odd and hence never halt. See, it is loading seven and then it is subtracting two and it just repeats. So if I switch it on manual mode, turn the speed way up, you can see that uh, the code is never going to halt and will just indefinitely loop. I've now turned down the speed of the program, but now I'd like to draw your attention to the uh, dip switch here, which was an add-on I made to the Trump board, which was to select different combinations of numbers for the custom function I created. Uh, now since the number of lines in the Trump is only 4 bits, this left the remaining 7 bits to be used to select different programs in, for the program ROM, because the program ROM uh, is in total has a size of 11 bits. Uh, I was planning to dedicate the four highest bits as one number and the three as the subtraction value which in, would involve a total of flashing uh, 128 different programs. Unfortunately I could not flash the code for all. Uh, uh, I tried very hard but uh, the program EEPROM would not flash correctly. So to actually change numbers you'd have to take this out and manually uh, change the code inside the program EEPROM. I plan to make it work sometime in the future uh, because I think it's a really cool feature and it takes advantage of the large EEPROM space that is provided. Here is the EEPROM burner code I tried to use for uploading the 128 programs and since it's, it didn't work I stuck to the EEPROM burner code created by my teacher Mr. Darcy shown here. Here it's got my code, uh, my, my function that I, that I created. This was my previous one in the other video. And it's also got some example ones that I've used throughout the video. Uh, it's also got the control codes that are uploaded to the control EEPROM uh, as well. So overall, this is my 4-bit chump fit on three breadboards. And I think it was one of the best projects I've ever done in the ACES course, to be honest. There are a lot more downs than ups when building this, uh, but as you can see, I managed to get through it. And it's like, it can only do like really simple operations, can't play games on it like Doom yet, uh, since this is only 4-bit. Uh, but anyway, it was still really fun to just see it work and to see uh, operations being performed on this, uh, even though they were simple. And it also enriched my knowledge on computer architecture that is the basis for all of our technology today.